Good evening, family. You've tuned in again to another edition of The Journey 2020. And tonight we have a very special broadcast uh, that I think that all of you will find informative, educational, and maybe even get a smile or two as we broadcast. I just want to uh, let you know my name is Dr. John Robertson, and uh, I'll be one of your hosts. Uh, your other host is going to be uh, my good buddy, and uh, well, I'm going to stop calling him my, my partner <laughs> in crime because he's too good of a good guy to call that. Uh, and that is Charles Morris. Well, Charles? Thank you, Dr. Robinson. Uh, blessings to you, and uh, I'm looking forward to today's show. Um, as, as always, I like to uh, sit back and observe, and uh, I probably will learn something. And um, we have someone coming on that's uh, probably parking in the parking lot right now. But what you don't know, uh -huh. I've, been knowing, I've been knowing her, oh gosh, you're going to tell my age now. Uh -huh. I've been knowing her since 1977. Oh, whoa. Yeah, yeah, we, okay. yeah, that, but when she was on the campus of Cookman. So, okay. Yeah, so we used to play ball and da da da. But I've um, been knowing her for a very, very long time. And uh, we have another guest here, and we can talk about her, and we've been knowing her for a while. But uh, <laughs> we won't talk about her right now, but uh, I'm going to throw it back to you, and you go ahead and okay, uh, just good. do what you do. All and right. uh, let's have a great show. Well, you know, it's interesting that you were talking about. Uh, our guests and uh, ball play because that was one of the things that I wanted to uh, explore, you know, as we go through the broadcast tonight. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Because, you know, sometimes people look at uh, uh, you, me, and other folks uh -huh. uh, and say, well, you know, um, uh, uh, well, this uh, guy's got a doctoral degree. Right. Uh, and that guy is a, a noted cinematographer All right and, uh, See, and, uh, but and the funny thing I'm just telling this story does they not to get off topic uh -huh. but if you go home mm -hmm. and you go in my neighborhood mm -hmm. and if you ask anybody that you say do you know Charles and they go oh you're talking about the basketball player uh, right, right? Yeah. but see nobody here in Orlando knows me as the basketball player or the jock uh -huh. oh come on in come on in, come on in. so um, yeah, it's funny but uh, th that was many 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 moons <laughs> Ago, so I see a few of those myself. Right. So, um, as uh, Dr. Flagler, come on in. We were just talking about you. I was, I was telling um, Dr. Robinson that um, she vaguely remembered me on the campus of Cookman, but I remember her very well. So I was telling, I was telling uh, Dr. Robinson that um, I've been knowing you since back in in the Cookman days when uh, I used to be on the campus. Everybody think I went to Bethune Cookman because I was on the campus every day. Uh, <laughs> so okay. I had that black college experience without actually attending the black college. Uh, uh, but um, see, see now, Charles, I'm going to talk about you a little bit because I remember from our first broadcast. You know, right. Charles seems to always find himself in the presence of you know some pretty women. Well, you know. well, why you think I was on campus every <laughs> right. day? That's what I'm, know, saying. I'm saying. I mean, I wasn't. I mean, I was. I wasn't stupid. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> I was on campus right. every day, right. and uh, right. that's that's what I was saying because I had a crush on Linda Banks. She knows who Linda Banks is. Uh -huh. she, Linda, you know, you know, Linda Banks was you know basketball player about six two, gorgeous, da 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 da, uh -huh. and played with Cynthia Lukes and her and all, you know all those girls from back in the day. And those girls was bad. All right. All Americans. They were they were they were some bad girls from back in the day. Oh. All right, all right. Well, we, we're going to start from the present and maybe uh, go, go, go to the past. <laughs> exactly. But uh, just so that our audience knows, uh, tonight uh, we have two uh, very beautiful and distinguished guests. Uh, firstly, the young lady that just walked in uh, is Dr. Marcia Flagler. And uh, Dr. Flagler is someone who is uh, well known in the Orlando area and ac actually known nationally. Uh, Dr. Flagler is involved with a variety of substance abuse projects that she'll talk about as we go through the broadcast. And uh, our other wonderful guest is uh, Pastor Bridget uh, Norville. And uh, Pastor Bridget, uh, who you may remember from our broadcast uh, on immigration, uh, and she uh, talked about parenting, is also somebody that is going to tell you another aspect of her life and another aspect 
of her story. So tonight we are going to focus in on alcohol and substance abuse. The reason why we're doing that is that September is National Alcohol and Drug Recovery Month. The point of the month is to indicate that the community needs to be aware. And by community, I mean our national community needs to be aware of the alcohol and drug problems that are out here. But as a second part of it, to also be aware that treatment is available for those individuals who are encountering problems with alcohol and drugs. And thirdly, the major message that we want to give is that treatment does work. So with that, I want to open up and just ask Dr. Flagler if uh, she'll uh, just tell us a little bit about um, one of the questions that a number of people have, have asked me, and that is, uh, why should we as a, a black or minority community put a lot of emphasis on uh, alcohol and drug prevention uh -huh. and treatment? So Dr. Flagler. Okay, um, gladly. Um, I, I must say myself that from even a, a personal standpoint, that what I understand professionally today, but as a result of uh, my personal experience and having myself gone from a, a very productive lifestyle, growing up in a household where I did have very positive role models and um, not having what we usually think are the excuses are, are those reasons that we look at individuals that may end up abusing drugs and alcohol. Mm -hmm. I didn't um, have that in my background. Mm -hmm. um, I had a productive uh, childhood, a productive high school, uh, college life, um, even to the degree of being drafted to play professional ball and, and a lot of uh, being one of those student athletes mm. that were very outstanding and had a real s firm foundation growing up. Um, so, so you could have been our uh, Lisa Leslie of uh, uh, women's basketball. <laughs> oh yes. In okay. fact, I got an opportunity to play with, I think we probably had a Lisa Leslie, a Cheryl Swoops and, and uh, even today, the, the, the uh, gain. Dr. Robinson, I don't, I don't want to break you up, but honestly, <laughs> you know, like I said, people don't know me as a basketball player. Right. Um, but those group of girls that played when she was there mm -hmm. were probably some of the best female basketball players that I've ever seen or ever played with. And that's no, they could easily by far play today in the WNBA with that, no hands down. You know, it's interesting, and we'll, we'll get back to our topic, but and I think that's one of the things that uh, I think that our broadcast mm -hmm. uh, hopefully brings out, and that is there are so many uh, uh, heroes and sheroes uh, in our mm -hmm. community that have never gotten recognition, just as you were talking about mm -hmm. the uh, Bethune Cookman uh, women's basketball team. Just think about the many uh, African-American women who mm -hmm. had mm -hmm. the potential, mm -hmm. had the talent, right. and uh, perhaps whose stories may never be known. All um, right. And right. so I'm so glad that you are here tonight with uh, the, the story that you have, which is not only the story of uh, being an athlete and a scholar, but a story of someone who has come through the storm oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and, and had the, the resilience to be able to not only to survive, but to thrive. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I want to get mm -hmm. back to you to continue. Okay, sure. And um, you know, and I'd like to think that it was me, but I know it, it's but for the grace of God, you know. Um, I just was fortunate though to get into a very good treatment program, mm -hmm. um, and I had a family that um, didn't condone what I did, but they always encouraged me to do to get the help that I needed, and that's something that in working in the field today. I, I've kind of gotten on this mission now to help us, uh, I want to say it's break the chains that mm. we have, mm. that we, we think sometimes that we can just pray everything away, go to church everything away. We don't really want to talk and, and really say, I need help. You know, mm. this is something that, that is really, you know, tearing me apart. I, I've tried everything and, and what I'm trying is not working. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes that keeps barriers between us in getting the help that we need and coming to have the freedom and and today you know I realize that I work in the field and I love it and I have a passion for it but I believe it's a gift I, mm -hmm. I truly believe that you know um, I was enabled and I was blessed 
to to overcome where I had become, um, which was totally opposite of the way I had been raised, mm. and and with all of the accolades that I had academically and you know just overall you know career wise and all none of that was able to to steer me back I had to get the help and the mm. help worked you know it really treatment worked for me but I had to work yeah you know it didn't yes. just happen because I went in I had to actually come out and continue to to practice a recovery lifestyle mm -hmm. and it does work and I, and I and I think that there's no reason for us to be ashamed you know, I would not have chosen and, mm. and would not have thought that the, the having a good time party hardy, you know, was <laughs> was going to lead to, you know, um, the, the lifestyle that I ended up in. But but I thank God that in spite of that and sometimes because of that mm. today, the life I have has it has an insurmountable meaning for me. Mm. And, and I understand more and more how God wants us to give back and, and help others as a result. You so. know, that is so important. And I, I want to um, uh, 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 just get uh, some input from uh, yeah. Pastor Bridget as uh, Dr. Flagler was talking about how uh, sometimes people will uh, say, and especially in our community, um, you know, uh, just, just pray on it. Um, and um, I'd like to get your, your point of view as a, uh, uh, a person of the cloth, so to speak, as what do you think about it? Just said okay, it. <laughs> okay. It, you know, and and I tell people I'm a different pastor mm -hmm. because if you think that you're going to call a pastor to pray for everything, mm -hmm. first thing is that faith without works is dead. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you have to do the work. Mm -hmm. I can pray all day, mm -hmm. but if you if we pray. And when we're finished praying, mm -hmm. you now doubt. Mm -hmm. See, for us to pray, and it's, it's, it's funny you're saying that because uh, just this week, we started our prayer center. Mm -hmm. And we talked about praying and praying amiss. Because mm -hmm. we can pray all day, but we don't get to the root to the fruit, the, the, the root okay. for that fruit. Mm -hmm. We're praying amiss. Mm -hmm. we, we don't know we're not taking it back to God and a lot of times that we we th w prayer does answer mm -hmm. and it's a mm -hmm. communication between you and God to mm -hmm. give you the mm -hmm. answer on how to move from mm -hmm. that thing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. not sit up there and put a band-aid on it mm -hmm. and that's Absolutely. what the church has done mm -hmm. they went and put this big old band-aid mm -hmm. oh we're gonna pray about it mm -hmm. but where's the word okay. where's the accountability Right. Yeah. So uh, I was listening to this right now with um, the Jewish New Year, mm -hmm. and I was listening to the Hebrew teachings on a radio uh, uh, show that you download. But they were saying that grace. Mm -hmm. We run around with this grace, mm -hmm. grace, 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 and I, I, I hope pastors are out there. But if you remember that. Jesus said that I came to fulfill the law, not to do, do away with the law. Mm -hmm. So anything mm -hmm. he had to do and follow, we should be following. Mm -hmm. Okay. So okay. I see this happen. Okay. You know, when my ex-husband and myself, I was, listen, I was going to church, smoking me some marijuana, laying up with my boyfriend, and, you know, claiming God did all this. Okay, you know? that's real. Okay. <laughs> I mm -hmm. bought my first house. I tell people I bought my first house with, you know, the, the pastor said, everybody in here is going to get a house. Mm -hmm. God okay. said, go, go get a house. Well, I was, I was, I took it in because I was a, a go getter. Uh -huh. and look, uh -huh. I was a hedge drug dealer, prostitute, and everything. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna go get me a house. Okay. Didn't have a job or anything. Forty pounds of marijuana dropped at my doorstep. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna get me a house. <laughs> I sold that marijuana and I got that my house. house. <laughs> Okay. So you yeah. think that yeah. shows you error right there. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> I got my house. Right, exactly, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. what you said is so correct. We, yeah. we need to teach. Mm -hmm. And if you've come to my church and I tell my members, mm -hmm. if you want the singing, the dancing, the jumping, the shouting, sinners needs preaching. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Saints need teaching. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You are going to be taught. Mm -hmm. So you can go out there mm -hmm. and and stand strong. Mm 
Okay. So. You know, <laughs> that, that is so important, you know, because the, the, the messages, again, that I'm getting, because um, I, I know as you were addressing some of the pastors mm -hmm. out there, mm -hmm. uh, again, we're not saying that, the, that the, the, the church is not giving the correct message, but, but that the church, again, has to go another step. Balance. And mm -hmm. to balance mm -hmm. and to educate. Uh, the, and you mentioned that word, educate the members so that they can, you know, walk in the ways, you know, of, of the Lord, walk in the ways mm -hmm. that uh, mm -hmm. the scripture and Jesus, you know, has taught us. So uh, the, the, the other message that, that um, I'm, I'm also hearing is one in, uh, that, that uh, Dr. Flagler talked about that, um, and, and, and it can be summarized in that is, if but for the grace of God. That's right. You know, mm -hmm. there, there go I. That's right. Mm -hmm. Because That's right. Uh, many people, looking at, uh, let's say, your familial background and your education and whatnot would say, oh, no, you know, That's she right. couldn't, she <laughs> couldn't be. That's um, right. Oh, no. Um, and as beautiful as Pastor Bridget is, oh, no, you know, she couldn't do the things that she said that, that right. she would do. But That's again, right. many times we look at the surface mm -hmm. and we don't look at sometimes the inner pain and and the mm -hmm. and the inner uh, needs mm -hmm. that we as human beings have, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. as a result of that, and especially in in our community, you know, we mm -hmm. we like to say, you know, uh, what what what's uh, what happens here in the mm -hmm. house stays in what's the house. Said, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so uh -huh. part of the thing that I'm hoping in our broadcast that we're getting the message across that we need to reach hands out, mm -hmm. um, hands out in the church, hands out in mm -hmm. the community, hands out wherever it is in order to get our people help, you right. know, in order right. to have the, the, the two sides that I see are one, having the help available mm -hmm. and b being able to say that my way isn't working. Right. Okay. Right. Right. And to be right. able to then say, okay, I'm going to go and get some help. And for mm -hmm. so many of our folks, and I know that in each one of our lives that we have probably seen folks that we have loved, cared about, or been friends with, who we have said, you know, you need to do something. You mm -hmm. need to get mm -hmm. help. You mm -hmm. know, and the message often is, well, um, you know, I'm not that bad. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Yes. All right. I, 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 just, I, I just need to cut down, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And so... I'd like to, to again ask in, in terms of uh, Dr. Flagler, your experience, uh, some people have a hard time uh, figuring out uh, when uh, someone has uh, an alcohol problem or a drug problem. Mm -hmm. uh, how do they determine when um, uh, uh, too much is not enough, okay. Uh, okay. you know. <laughs> right? <laughs> okay. Yeah. okay. And, and, uh, and uh, I don't know, we, we just uh, yeah. touch on that a bit. Okay, certainly in the rooms we say one is too many and a thousand is never exactly. enough, exactly. you know. Um, and one of the first things that happens, you know, I, I think when we look at behaviors, because physically on the outside, you know, I, I even in, in a lot of groups I tell, tell my clients, you know, Physically, we look good for a lot longer, you know, at first. <laughs> at the first. physical thing kind of goes down the line because we are very good at covering up. So it's very good for families that really know us when they see the telltale signs where behaviors, mm -hmm. um, irresponsibility, money, all of a sudden, you know, you know that there's a certain amount of money coming in, but a, a constantly... I need some more money, I need some more money. Mm -hmm. um, being unaccountable, mm -hmm. you know, kind of, for whatever reason, always getting lost at certain times and, and, mm -hmm. and you can't put, you know, you call and you can't get responses. Mm -hmm. um, and individually, I think we need to know that when, they, when our use begins to interfere with day-to-day functioning, mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. we're unable to, to respond to emotions, it, appropriately um, decision making gets very faulty mm -hmm. sociably we're, we're having a lot of conflicts just on edge irritable mm -hmm. not resting well um, a lot of those things when when a lot of people closest to us say something's going on mm -hmm. 
Mm. Some, I just can't put my finger, but there's mm -hmm. something, you know, and um, and I think everyone is in denial. Loved ones okay. are in denial yeah. at first, too, because they think, and then they're like, no, we don't, you know, no. And then, you know, and the addict and alcoholic is very good at telling tales. Oh, 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 we can okay. come up with some good ones. <laughs> okay. We got, okay. okay. I mean, we convince you real well. You know? yeah, oh, so, yeah. Um, and that's hard. But yeah. being honest, but then not being condemning. I think I'm real fortunate that my family wouldn't condone. They knew someone, but they were were not like beat you up because mm. the individuals are able to beat we beat ourselves up better than anyone yeah you know and it's real important um to kind of have a, a tough love you know we're okay. not going to condone that and, and we're not going to be a part of that right. that's what you're doing but if you want to do something about it mm -hmm. you know we, we're here you know right. and what you said reminds me of my dad because my dad was a minister and I used to remember people used to say, well, Reverend Flagler, why you go out there to, there was a little bar down the street from his church, and he'd go in the parking lot while they're selling fish, and he'd sell the donuts for the church. And they'd mm. always ask, well, why? He said, you know, he said, God called me to go out and, and, and get for the sinners. He said, the, the people that saved in my church, they're saved. Mm. I, I've got to reach others. And, you know, and that always was something that, that was a good thing for me to mm. see because... You know, and he did the same too. My family was like that. And mm. it's important, don't beat a person up. Don't, mm. You know, you don't need to make a person feel worse than they already feel. However, right. say, you know what, something's going on. And we won't be a part of that. But if you want to get help, you know, we'll help you get help. And we'll be supportive while you get the help. Can I ask you, you a know? question? Mm -hmm. um, when you were talking about um, the condition, uh, but in our... Um, from the doctor's standpoint, the psychological standpoint, yeah. um, people also come to a point and what I understand that they need or they feel that they need either the alcohol or the drug in order to cope. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Sometimes that's an escape uh, mm -hmm. for, for whatever that is. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Whatever they're going through, mm -hmm. uh, not wanting to deal with the pain. Mm -hmm. uh, for. I guess the way that they look at it at that point at that time, that's a that's a that's a ease. Right. And then mm -hmm. when when you come back down, now they have to de still deal with the pain. That's right. But at the same time, when you get to that point of saying, "I need this just to walk out the door," right. I need right. this just to go do this. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Can you both talk about that for a second, or can you? Mm -hmm. could, I mean, could? Yeah. I mean, can yeah. you talk about I that for a second? Just to touch on that because right. there are three categories when it comes to addiction and the three is security sensation and power and control mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. being with an ex-husband for 15 years when and like you said they they, they they're really they're really strategic because they don't you when I first started dating him mm. now I wouldn't blame him as me being the enabler Mm -hmm. learning how to know myself and receiving that love mm -hmm. because of the attention I fed into what he was going through. Mm -hmm. My first time seeing him on the drug, I didn't know. I'm mm -hmm. cooking chicken soup. I'm seeing him, you know, just sweating, mm -hmm. talking about he's not feeling good and mm -hmm. I'm cooking chicken soup, nursing him back mm -hmm. to health. Mm -hmm. I'm nursing a crack at it back to health. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay. So when he finally gave in to me and trusted me, he did it in front of me one time mm -hmm. and he felt so low. And like you said, they do beat their self up. Mm -hmm. Now my drug of choice was alcohol and marijuana, but his was crack. Mm -hmm. And just to fast forward, brought him here to from, from Mississippi to Florida. I'm getting off the drug. Mm -hmm. I need to move, bring him with me, mm -hmm. think he's off the drug. But addiction is this. It just sedates the problem mm -hmm. within. Mm -hmm. So now his drug was either alcohol mm -hmm. and now he's selling heroin because mm. he was my crack dealer. Okay. So he started using his own stuff. But when I started getting into the behavior, mm -hmm. where did this start? Mm -hmm. Well, my mom never allowed me to go out and smoke marijuana. She always said, stay here in the mm -hmm. house so you won't mm -hmm. get in trouble. Mm -hmm. So who was the enabler? 
Okay. So now when he got me, guess what? Oh, you remind me of my mom. Mm-hmm. So now I enabled him for 15 years until, yes, I, I prayed. Okay. I, I prayed, and he'll tell you because he, we're not together now. Mm-hmm. But when he speaks, he said, yeah, I saw my ex-wife call on Jesus. But the thing is, once I called on Jesus and he went and got help, I went and got out of that place mm. and said, you will not come back here until you are finished with your sobriety. Mm-hmm. He's been off for seven years, but guess what? Just like Charles said, he needed a sensation. He cheated on me. Mm. So I tell people, I prayed for him to get off a crack. Mm -hmm. But did I get to the root of the addiction? Because everything, when it comes down to something else that's going to stimulate the brain and sensation, Mm -hmm. you need something else to fill that. Mm. You're going to find anything else. People get addicted to church, sex, Mm -hmm. uh, domestic abuse, all these different things. You know, toxic relationships. Right. Food. Yeah. So we're not really getting to the root of the thing because we're covering it up. So now he's about 300 and something pounds. When I met him, he was about under 200. Mm -hmm. But now he has a new addiction, food. And a new woman. Mm. So you, we really didn't fix it. We just covered it covered up. Covered it up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And, and that's yeah. one of the things, too, that, you know, in um, in treatment, you know, th- that's where we emphasize the change of recovery lifestyle. See, a mm. lot of times we think that we remove the substance, but see, the substance is only a symptom. Right. The real yes. disease is the, the addiction, and we say disease is mm. dis-ease. dis-ease. There's yeah. a dis-ease Ease. about how I think about things, my perception of life, how I react to, to any stimuli, whether mm. it's feelings, relationships, the job, the whatever, but there was a coping because for me, the recreational use began to be more of, of a regular thing when, when the Women's League folded and all of the dreams that I had mm. as a student athlete coming up at saying, I'm going to play professional sports. And people in high school say, oh, nobody got no professional sports for women. Mm. And, and, and graduating from Bethune-Cookman and being drafted to play pro ball. And then mm. the league folds. Mm. Now, you know, I'm like, what do we what do? What do we do? You know, it's like that part. And what had happened is, is that for so much of my life, I thought that I was really accomplishing things and everything was built upon on the outside. Mm, and what mm-hmm. I learned in the process of recovery is that, you know, God gives me everything within me for everything. And it's about tapping into that mm. and coming now to live a lifestyle. See, it's about lifestyle changes. Because if I just stop using, and I, I've had a number of times that I thought just not using was enough. Right. Mm-hmm. And I'd always end back up using one more. What's happening? What's happening? Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. but what I realized it came around to, like you were saying, there are things within us. There are yeah. even sometimes we go back and we realize it in our childhood. We've experienced things that for whatever reason has kept us kind of held hostage within ourselves. Mm-hmm. And, and it can be something that a lot of times people live for the, all of their lives with. Exactly. But the difference is, is. Once we begin to medicate it, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and like Charles was even saying, mm-hmm. we're medicating to, to drown out the pain or to drown out whatever it is. And, and the depression I went through when the league folded and then I didn't go overseas because I had surgery and it was like, oh, all is lost. Mm-hmm. So now my recreation substances begin to be an everyday thing to mm-hmm. drown it out. Okay. However, where I go, I go too. So right. everything that was going on inside of me it didn't change me feeling a sense of helplessness and, and hopelessness and failure, which I wasn't at all. I mean, Ex- today I realized, my God, God had something else better for me as a result of that. However, at that time, it was my perception. Perception. Mm-hmm. It was different. And that's what recovery does. And, and that's why it's important that the process, and, and I definitely know that it's, it's a God thing. God, if it mm. wasn't for God, I wouldn't have none of it. And, mm. and spirituality is, is a part mm. of the process as well. Yeah, to um, mm. kind of talk about what you're talking about, what I can relate to what she's saying from the standpoint mm-hmm. when you have that part of what you have in your life as an athlete, mm-hmm. it's kind of like being on stage. Mm. Okay? Mm-hmm. So when you are a good athlete and you're used to being on stage you're used to the to the light being on you 
Mm -hmm. Now it's just like the child actors that grow up and then all of a sudden they 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 can't find work and you see them all of a sudden they're on drugs and da da da. Right. So what happens is you wake up one day and the light is not on you, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. all of a sudden now your true dysfunction starts to show because you don't. Ha it, it takes part away of your personality of who you are. Right. Mm -hmm. And so now you have to really deal with life. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have those kind of skills like she was talking about mm -hmm. or an understanding of what life is about, you can get lost and you can become depressed and you're trying to find your purpose. You're going like, what happened? I don't understand. I got a dream. My dream's mm -hmm. not coming true. Where do mm -hmm. I go? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So it's a life altering change where yes. you have to see life in a totally different and you have to see yourself totally different mm -hmm. because part of who you are mm -hmm. is when you walk in the room, you know that light mm -hmm. shines on you. Mm -hmm. you, you. You're used to people coming, hey, you know, because you're used to being the star athlete. And be, now all of a sudden people are like, who? It's almost like, who are you now? Right. Exactly. So and that's part of, and, and, and I know that's what she's talking about. Exactly. And, and, and okay, I, go I ahead. I have flickers uh, playing in my okay, head. Okay, go, go I'm ahead. I'm thinking about my ex-husband. I'm thinking about myself. I wanted to be a dancer. I played basketball, different things. And this was the only thing of, of stability and normaliz normalism when it came to my family mm -hmm. life. Mm. Now, uh, that's how I end up on, in my book I talk about how I end up on a lot of different roller coasters. Mm -hmm. But my ex-husband, to listen to both of you, he wanted to be a football star mm -hmm. and he played for football college. Well, he messed it up. Mm -hmm. And this was by, you know, going with the other guys mm -hmm. and smoking marijuana and mm -hmm. tested positive. He messed up, now he loses his scholarship. Mm -hmm. Where mm -hmm. do he go from here? Mm -hmm. So right. he sits there and now he wanted that limelight. You know, he was mm -hmm. the star quarterback and you know, he mm -hmm. was number one. Yeah. And like, yeah. where do I go from here? And that's how he ended up on the yes. substance abuse. Now, one thing I noticed about myself as a wife, I noticed a pattern mm -hmm. every time we got into an argument because he would get off mm -hmm. and he'll be doing good for about six months and women yes women i can tell you this that mouth <laughs> and i dig into him mm. you're no man you need to do this you need oh my goodness he oh, was boy, you, <laughs> you was breaking that bro I I but, but it's keeping it man. real yes, yes. I broke okay. him yeah. down. Oh, yes, you and did. next yeah. minute I'm going for a walk, <laughs> and that walk got long. <laughs> and come back, and you see this. And mm. I'm like, okay, what walk you went on? Mm. <laughs> and I know yeah. that those eyes. Yeah. And I'm yeah. like, okay. And he will always tell me, because it's 15 years mm -hmm. out of prison, doing good, working. You ain't making enough money for me. You need to do this. You need to find a better job. Yeah, da, 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 da. Go back for that walk. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Back. Oh, okay. And I power had to of a woman. Learn. The power of a yeah. woman. I had <laughs> right. to learn. Yes. I had to learn. Exactly. Then I wanted it all. Mm. I wanted everything. It's mm -hmm. it, you know, yeah, I made it about you, but I want it now because I think I put up with you enough and never knew that people with addiction need stability. Yes. And it was, you need to go out there and work. I'm mm. going to stay home. I'm going to run my business. I'm going to do what I want to do. Mm. But he wasn't strong enough for that. Mm. Mm -hmm. So now this sets him back out. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying he's no good. But he still comes back. I remember one time he came back from jail again. And I wrote him a letter. Do not come back. Go home. Go mm. back to Mississippi. I'm done. Mm -hmm. He came to the door. <laughs> Paid $153 from Coleman Prison to the house. And when I opened the door, I'm like, and I slammed the door in his face. Mm. And my daughter, I was living at my with my daughter at the time. She said, Ma, who was that? I said, you know, my ex-husband. I, I Read the book. You'll find it. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I, oh, his name is Kirk in the book. Kirk. Kirk. Okay. okay, Kirk. All right. I said, that's Kirk. He, she said, where is he? I said, he's outside. She said, that man came all the way from jail. And mm. <laughs> you slammed the door in her face. I'm like, I ain't telling him to come and live with me. But that was the last year. Mm -hmm. I didn't see 
just him with the problem. Mm -hmm. I was the problem. Mm -hmm. I didn't like me. Mm -hmm. Hurt people hurts people. Yeah. And the relationship we were in was dysfunctional. Okay. And I wasn't good for him. Yeah. And he had to realize that. You know, that is mm -hmm. so, so important because mm -hmm. one of the things that, and, and I want to expand out, uh, Pastor Bridget, as you were talking about you and, and your husband, so many families get tired, you know, of the alcoholic mm -hmm. or the drug, mm -hmm. drug addict. Mm -hmm. And um, as you were saying, well, rightfully so. Now, I mean, you know, we, we, well, well, we well, 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 well. I think, I think, <laughs> getting, I think, give me a second. I love what she's saying. Yeah, I, mean, I, 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 I think, wait a minute now. Hold on a second. I think that getting, I think getting tired. Is a, okay, getting tired is a human response. Yes. You know, and everybody, and after a while, you begin to say, okay, now, okay. But what I want to put, put on to that is that just as you were saying that your response at that time, you know, was responding in a dysfunctional relationship. Mm -hmm. Often, and, and I think this is a real important point, families get dysfunctional, you know, when they can't or don't have the skills to deal yes. with that alcoholic or drug addicted person. Mm -hmm. And so, mm -hmm. you know, you get the, either the enabling of, you know, come on in, honey, it's all right. Mm. Or, you know, <laughs> you no good, what, 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 whatever, mm -hmm. and literally slam the door. Mm -hmm. And so part of the, the message that I'm getting from, from both of you is that there is a third way to go. Yes. And, okay. And that is getting that person, doing what you need to do, tough love um, or whatever, to encourage that person to get into treatment. When you... Okay, and but go ahead, go ahead. Tough I, I will change that. Okay, go ahead. It took love. Mm -hmm. Okay. It really took the love to say, I'm here for you, mm -hmm. but you need to get help. Mm -hmm. And that time, this last time, I remember I used to change the locks. Mm. And mm -hmm. when you came home, you didn't have no way of getting in. Mm -hmm. I tried to, I tried to baby you. Mm -hmm. I tried the hard way by changing the locks. Mm -hmm. But I remember when God said, hmm, you can't change the locks this time. I'm like, mm -hmm. what you mean I can't change the locks? Mm -hmm. He said, you gotta love them out of this one. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, really? Because I was learning how to love myself. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. And I saw and I went back as a parenting instructor mm -hmm. to his past. Mm -hmm. And he said, what did everybody always do to him? Mm. Did he learn responsibility? I said, no. He said, you can't do this this time. Mm -hmm. I stuck it out. It was very hard. Mm -hmm. It was very, very hard. But I played prayers in the house when he came in. Mm -hmm. Are you hungry? Mm -hmm. I know he's high. Mm -hmm. Look, I, I married The Rock. And after, through the, the marriage, he looked like JJ on, on Good Times. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, you talk, okay. and you're talking to JJ, are you hungry? Mm -hmm. yeah. When he came in, I mean, I, I, I used to, the first time when he used to come in, I saw the demon with him. Can we get real? And mm. I said, get out. And he said, see, you always telling me to get out. Mm -hmm. And he'll be so high. And I said, no, I see what comes in with you because he will be two shades darker. Mm -hmm. it, it's just a sweat. And I had to see that again. Mm -hmm. But this time, I'm like, are you hungry? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, okay. And I'll see the fidgeting. Mm -hmm. I'll see all this that he's going through. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, it's going to be okay. Mm-hmm. I want to make a comment. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, yes. I'm, I, I want you to say what you want to say, but yeah. right. okay. every time Bridget come on the show, she always there's always a show in a show. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, of, of course, of course. As they say, the sister had so many talents, you know. Except, why not? But it's you know, that. No, yeah. But there's another show in what she said when she was talking earlier. Yeah. Because when she was talking about when it first started happening if she had a better understanding of her power mm -hmm. in the sense of what she is to him in general, mm -hmm. a, a, a man to a woman and a woman to a man, mm -hmm. the power that she truly had in her and where he fell short and how 
through prayer, also through the spirit of Christ that he will see in you, mm -hmm. where the confidence wasn't there, you needed to instill that confidence mm -hmm. versus snatching it away from it. Mm -hmm. And it would have made all, I believe it would have made all the difference in the world, but that's part of the maturity, learning, right. part of learning who Christ mm -hmm. is, also learning how marriage work, life work, and just who you are and the power that you have. Mm -hmm. And it did work mm -hmm. right. after 15 years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but yeah. yeah, go, go, is, go ahead. And the thing is, is that our family and loved ones, unfortunately, you could not have done anything different. Right. The disease itself and where the addict and alcoholic is at certain degrees. I had a praying mother, father, minister, plenty of family that loved me unconditionally that from it, it was eight years of back and forth, up and down, maybe a good first four of them, up and down, back and forth, and up and down, back and forth, and then at at a, the last four of them of really making efforts, but not totally surrendering to all that I needed to do. Mm -hmm. See, and and what happens is a lot of times our family and loved one really truly believes that it's something different that they could do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in the, the cycle of addiction, there is nothing different mm -hmm. that, that they can do. It's a matter of when it's time. When, if, if we are so fortunate that we live to that point mm -hmm. and, and we're blessed in that, that God has that, that journey for us, we get to that point where we are ready to do what we have to do. And at that point, then all of the prayers and everything that you do and the tough love and all of that because mm -hmm. it can be there all along mm -hmm. and, and we're not ready. Mm -hmm. We're, we're mm -hmm. just not, we just are she, not right. ready. Mm -hmm. And see, and then what happens is, is today by the grace of God, it, and it's been 22 years, 15 days and however many hours right. since I've had any drugs, alcohol, anything. And, right. and you know, and but by the grace of God, because on any given day, I understand if I don't do today the same thing it takes, I'm not removed. Mm -hmm. You know, the disease mm -hmm. is there. But what I understand is that God placed a lot of guardian angels and in, in in my life, mm -hmm. and and I had people that loved me that were receptive mm -hmm. to me taking those things. See, we pray and we ask for and then God sometimes sends the boat and I let the boat go by. You know? <laughs> okay. And I finally stopped letting the boat and the plane and everything go by. But it wasn't because of my family that mm -hmm. I didn't. And, and that's one of the things that we have to understand that it is really about what I'm willing to do for mm -hmm. my recovery because things happen. I mean, there are the most, I, in most excruciating painful things just life shows up it's mm -hmm. about life on life terms it's things that 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 the team's folding and all of those things those weren't the end of the world it was my perspective of them mm -hmm. at that time that I had built mm -hmm. my life around all of these things that I was doing and today you know the things I do don't make me who I am it's who God blesses me to be that enables me to do the things that I do See, mm -hmm. and, but mm -hmm. I did not, I saw it the opposite way. Mm -hmm. And, and right. it wasn't that I wasn't taught different, it was just for whatever reason, I grasped, I grabbed a hold of some, you know, some mm -hmm. other concepts and thought I did new things that, you know, <laughs> I, I didn't have as much sense mm -hmm. as I thought I did. I had to. Well, I always so, say, you know. And I agree with both of y'all, but that exercise wasn't for him. It was, it for, was for me. It was for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. That's right. And yeah. That's right. yeah. I believe in energy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because it's like what Charles said if my energy was there in the beginning mm -hmm. and what he was trying to reach he he had made up his mind plenty of times to make that decision to make that change and mm -hmm. it takes the steps it's, it's, it's mm -hmm. a preparation mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I notice now mm -hmm. when I made the step within myself mm -hmm. remember Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to the word. Mm -hmm. Me and you are one. Mm -hmm. That's my mate. Mm -hmm. So now I'm dysfunctional. Dysfunctional come in the home. And you're now triggering something that's going to set it off. Mm -hmm. But when you came in. Now it didn't stop right away. But I had to learn patience. Mm -hmm. I had to learn love mm -hmm. within me. 
Mm -hmm. and what I was now going through mm -hmm. because he's looking at a person abusing herself I'm actually hitting myself in the head getting mm -hmm. high you know to, to right. marijuana he on crack I'm on marijuana mm -hmm. you know we, we just yeah. trying to sedate yeah. ourselves from the relationship yeah, right. <laughs> so now he changed and this is where I stood up at that time now uh -huh. I'm saying he went to get help mm -hmm. but I was not there for you to now lean on. Mm -hmm. I gave up the apartment. I, I I didn't even sell the furniture. I gave the furniture away. I went downstairs mm -hmm. as soon as he went and got help. Mm -hmm. Went downstairs, this young lady had a little kid, had no nothing in her house. I said, you want some furniture? She said, yeah. I said, <laughs> come on upstairs. She said, what can I take? I said, everything. Mm -hmm. She said, everything? <laughs> I said, pots, pan, take it all. Okay. And I, I I got out of Dodge and I yeah. went to go stay with my family because I know he couldn't come back there because they were afraid of him because mm -hmm. of his substance abuse. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, we have nowhere to go now because mm -hmm. his family's in Mississippi. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He didn't want to go back there. He know, he, you know, his actions there. Mm -hmm. right. So I'm like, you have nowhere to go. Right. Sounds so, like you stopped enabling him. That's it. It, it. wasn't, Ex exactly. it wasn't that, that was it. And then there was mm -hmm. no longer a it, it helped you it broke it broke the chain for you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because families are very much affected and a lot of times what happens is too in the recovery process we may also help to break cycles mm -hmm. whether it's that of not communicating about certain things mm -hmm. or maybe just the understanding like you were saying that it, it helped you in, in your own journey because it does we we all help one another exactly. when we go through together and sometimes we're all going through this part but here's a new journey for mm -hmm. us that, mm -hmm. that we go through exactly. and you know because I remember my mother on a many times and then I have a second mother and I tell people sometimes I remember where I had my father sending me money about three or four times in a day to fix a car that never got fixed because the car wasn't getting fixed. I was okay. taking the money and buying a car. Right. Okay. But I'd say, oh, you know, that they got through and something else went wrong with the mm. car. Now they find something else. And by the time I think one, either my father or mother decided to call my, my other mom here and um, they and I guess she kind of pulled their coattail and was like, no, no. Mm. She called and found out that the place had had fixed my car. They were waiting to get paid. I mm. had been taking the money, going and getting something else. So, you know, in, in essence, though, at one point, they finally came around. And I think that because I had parents, a mother and father, my father's first wife is like my second mom. And she was, she's like that rock. And mm. so she would help tell them, no, she taking you through, y'all. Yeah, yeah. She'll pull their coat, you know, and then, yeah, right. you know, which was a blessing because I understand that down the line that it helped them so that they can begin to kind of have some tough love because it does. We we tear our families down and the people that love us most because that's just the nature of the disease. Mm -hmm. It's about yeah. how do I get more at any extent. Right. It doesn't matter because I can't love you when I can't even love myself exactly. right then. I'm exactly. driven by this disease that just tells me to get more, to get more, to get more, means and ways, whatever ways, however necessary. Mm. Mm. Now what happens is I learned through the process today that, you know, nothing in God's will, his grace doesn't get me through because there's been some real tough journeys, mm. you know, losing my brother, losing, you know, um, both fathers and, and mm. you know, recently, couple years ago losing my mother which I thought I would never I mean not once though I can say that I want to go get high and I mean they're doing about the excruciating pain mm. that was I can't even imagine and never would have thought if anybody would ever told me I would experience that type of pain and not want to get high mm. before I experienced it I would have been like you got to be kidding me okay. but I understand that it, it was you know the, the grace of God I I did not ever think at one time of using with all of the pain. And I understand the difference in that in living a recovery lifestyle because mm -hmm. what happens is is that it's our perception. I knew that although I might be in pain today, if I just get through this moment, and I you knew can. that oh, God had brought me through so much. He brought me through running around out them streets looking crazy, 
think I was cute and looking peculiar, you know. <laughs> and he brought me through all of that. Right. Too ashamed to face my family because mm. I knew that, that it was painful for them and that I knew better. All mm -hmm. of the things that I knew he had brought me out of, I knew he would get me through it. Sometimes I didn't know how. I just curl up and, and hurt and pray and cry and do whatever, go to my meetings, talk to people, talk to my family, you know, whatever I needed to do. But there was no reason to use, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and that's one of the messages that I try so hard with, with even the people I work with that, you know, this is a no matter what. It ain't no reason today to, to, pick, to up. pick up. You know, we're granted with, with an opportunity not to. Okay. You know? One of the things that I, I just wanted to interject as, as we're moving along here, mm -hmm. that it is, it is so um, extraordinary uh, for me to listen to two women um, again, in recovery, talk about the recovery process because often mm -hmm. there's a focus on the men. Mm -hmm. And when we take a look at both mm -hmm. our prevention efforts, our treatment, most mm -hmm. treatment is geared towards treatment of men. And to mm -hmm. have, yes, mm -hmm. and, to, and to have uh, two beautiful sisters talk mm -hmm. about what they have been through uh, pre recovery you know, and, and during recovery, and dealing with individuals within their family, as, as you, uh, Pastor Bridget, um, and, and, and being able to uh, present what you present today, uh, tells me that, that, that again, growing into your, yourselves as women, and Charles mentioned the power uh, of women is so important. And I want to say uh, one other thing that it seems that when you, and, and I want to utilize Pastor Bridget, learn to love yourself, mm -hmm. the power that was within you mm -hmm. was able to manifest so that you were able to, um, and to, to use uh, your term, you know, you were able to face the demon, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. without <laughs> being consumed or compromised by it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so that is so, so important. And I just wanted to, to, mm -hmm. to, to uh, make it that is. point. No, I, would, I, I was actually going to ask her, but she answered it. But then you also answered it as well, because the comment that she made before and the after, because she was still dealing with light, she was still dealing with pain, she was mm. still dealing with disappointment. So, but now her perspective on life and her self-love and how she mm -hmm. sees herself mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. really is the difference. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yes. You know. Mm -hmm. So that was I, I was going to ask her to make the comment, but when I but she answered it anyway, and then okay. you also just made the comment. Of, there's a, a a very close friend of mine, and, and she actually said that she was going to be tuning in. She lives up in, in uh, Newark. Mm -hmm. um, she was telling me about when she was uh, hooked on crack, mm -hmm. and she said, "Well, Charles, I um, she said I I was." back and forth in the crack house and I, I won't really tell her story but she said I got off a of crack because um, of what I saw in the crack house mm. and she said once I saw what was going on in the crack house and I saw somebody do something she said that was it for me I was mm. done mm. so but to know her and to know from from which she came and to now see her because she said I, she, she, she hadn't done any drugs in probably well over 30 years. Okay. But I also grew up with a brother that was doing that stuff, that, I mean, that, that the smack, the, the shooting mm -hmm. up, this was in the 60s. I mean, I was a little kid, but I didn't understand it when he came home and his eyes were rolling in the back of his head and you couldn't wake him up. Mm. But I also understood now that I'm older, why my brother, I mean, I don't know totally, but I have a better understanding of the covering up of the pain. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. the, the covering up of the pain mm -hmm. and, and we live so much in the unconscious mm -hmm. I, I, I have a, a teaching that the unconscious really trigger the subconscious mm -hmm. and the consciousness of the substance abuse becomes our conscious but we're, it's not it's something that's taught it's some pain that we're covering and we what happened to us we became conscious of it mm -hmm. we became conscious of our pain mm -hmm. and as you said that I change 
I had to change because it wasn't helping me. If I decided to stay on this earth, I'm not going to waste my time anymore destroying myself. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm speaking next week uh, in Gainesville, and I'm doing I'm going to do a teaching on the crucifixion of Christ. Mm. And the crucifixion is a part of deliverance. Okay. It's the steps of deliverance. Okay. Because if you actually think of the pain he had to go through to go to that cross. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the passion of Christ, we see this physically. Mm -hmm. But this is what we go through mentally, physically, and, and, and spiritually. spiritually. Mm -hmm. And, and if we just yeah. make it to that cross yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. and say it is finished. We will see, and I and now I talk about the resurrection of the healing. Yes, okay. So we're in healing. Yes. And recovery every day is healing. Mm -hmm. Because I remember when I stopped smoking marijuana, I put that last, it was 2005. Well, yeah, 2004, 2000, no, 2002. Mm -hmm. I put down my last marijuana, and one day I went to someone's house, and I saw a blunt on the television. Mm. And the first thing that mine said, girl, you should hit that. Mm. My ex-husband, come on, let's go. Mm -hmm. And he said, what's wrong? Did somebody say something to you? I said, no. I said, I need to go. Mm -hmm. I need to go. And to piggyback on that, mm -hmm. though, what she's saying is that it, it, because everything we see, we live and we change our lifestyle and we know today what we do not do. Mm -hmm. we, there is no question about it. When, when, when things happen, I understand that there is definitely nothing that's going to come about from using anything, mm -hmm. mm. you know. And when you speak of that resurrection, there, we had a symbol and treatment of the phoenix that mm. destroyed itself by fire and mm -hmm. rose from mm. its ashes. Right. And and through the 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 depths of what we go through in the process of recovery, one of the things the twelve steps does is it's a spiritual thing, mm -hmm. but it taps us back into looking at the whole journey. And, and beginning to grow up within ourselves, mm, and yes. as a result of that, the whatever looked like it was a curse has been turned around and been made into one of the greatest blessings Listen. we can see, and, mm -hmm. it, and it's rising from the ashes of mm -hmm. defeat, yes. you know, making it's bad choices, ending up in the wrong company or whatever, and today knowing that you know the life today is one that deserves better. I know that no matter what today life is more precious than anything and no matter how tough it is there's no need mm -mm. To, to go back to to any of that because it only gets better because everything is to me i realize it's preparation all yes. of the lessons today are all preparation for different lessons okay. <laughs> that's the key okay we only have a minute left <laughs> okay <laughs> one of the things that uh before we end today's broadcast that i want to say is that uh, we've got uh, an event coming up as part of National uh, Alcohol and Drug Recovery Month that is our recovery walk and run. All across the nation, just as you're listening tonight uh, to these uh, two distinguished sisters talk about their recovery, um, we're also part of a national uh, network of uh, communities celebrating recovery from the, the uh, tyranny of alcohol and substance abuse. And so uh, next Saturday in Orlando, if any of you are listening to the broadcast, come join us. There's going to be about uh, at least four or 500 folks who are family, friends, uh, recovering uh, alcoholics, uh, uh, substance abusers, who are going to be out in Barnett Park early 7.30 in the morning. And you know that's tough for um, uh, <laughs> what you say, even in recovery and stuff. <laughs> but we're going to be out there doing a 3K walk, 5K run for recovery. And our message is that treatment works, recovery works, and that there's no such thing as failure. Uh, as that old saying says, if you try and fail, so called, that try again because I've seen miracles of individuals who have gone through treatment time and time again, and who, just as Dr. Flagler was saying, that when they're ready, um, just that particular time, um, they recover. 
you know, they get into, they get it. And so, and it is something that uh, I would say to anyone listening out there, never give up, you know, that, that person that you are concerned about, that um, you have seen go through treatment, that you've seen go through everything and burn those bridges as you were talking <laughs> about, Dr. Flagler. But again, uh, uh, never give up. Uh, the message that treatment works is one that needs to be given that uh, for that person, that next attempt may be just the thing that works. And that along with prayer, um, along with, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> uh, and Definitely. taking care of yourself yes. mm -hmm. and knowing not only who you are, but whose yes. you are mm -hmm. is such a critical thing. Absolutely. Yes. I, I want to say, I did, from, if, if you see something wrong, one thing I, I learned, I identify the addictive pattern in my life. Then mm. I created a new pattern for my behavior. Mm. That is so Absolutely. beautiful. Dr. Blackwood, did you have uh, any last words that you want to share? Uh, just that, you know, we, we have everything within us to, mm. to overcome. Um, and that treatment works. There's never a reason that we have to continue to use, no matter what.